Hello, my sweet, dear, magical friends. Welcome, welcome to your weekly horoscope and teroscope with me, Natalie, spelled N-A-T-A-L-E-E, -E, as we open up the energies of your week ahead using the astrology, what's happening right now, and the tarot. I am going to take you guys over to the wholesomeoccultist.com. This is where you guys are going to be able to order the Halloween special edition six-month kit. This is psychic protection travel ready packaging everything you need to ward protect and guard against energy vampires negativity any other oogie boogies in your life this is a special edition we're not going to have this one again so you know halloween is freaking fun and spooky and witchy and all of the things so you want to have something you know if it's not this kit it's something else pick something pick some you know ritual or you know something to just protect yourself also, my bookings are all booked up for, let's see, uh, kind of like for the next few weeks. So this is kind of going to be the best thing. <laughs> the next best thing is what I would say. Um, the kit has 13 witchy items and six months worth, worth of psychic tea, protection tea. And so what also is really, really great about this is that I have included a special pamphlet, a special book that I wrote specifically for this kit so you guys are going to get the benefit of having my um like my guidance my direction my you know being under my tutelage you're, you guys are going to have like a little itty bitty <laughs> little piece not a little bit but you're going to get like a very good piece of that in that kit so it's kind of like one of the ways i'm trying to um multiply my teaching or just sort of extend myself so that more people could do more of this stuff that I do so that more people can actually take advantage. You know, maybe it's not um, feasible for you financially to sustain one of the tiers on Patreon for months and months, or maybe it's just not part of your consciousness to have like a daily meditation practice or a daily like, you know, any kind of witchy practice or any kind of protection stuff. And so getting that kit is going to be one of those ways you guys are going to be able to um, incorporate it into your daily life and be a little bit more. That's the whole point of the practical magic that I started is to balance spirituality and practicality and have it to be something that like a lifestyle, the wholesome occultist. So being an occultist, it's part of the lifestyle is that you do all of these things on the regular. It's not that you, um, you know, you, you just like rush start your day and then you never really reconnect with yourself. And then like you've fallen out of your spiritual practices or you've fallen out of your meditation chamber, whatever it is. So that's another, um, purpose that I, I really had in mind with that box is that it's six months of it so that you have everything you need no you know having to run out and find something or needing to get you know it just takes out like a lot of those little itty bitty steps like it's got 13 things in that kit it's travel ready like it's just it's we'd really designed it to be I'm like talking with Ashley I'm like I want this to be so like they got it they got it everything they need you know so you know it's I, i'm really happy with it i'm really proud of it so anyone that if anything comes up and you know i'm not going to be available for the next couple of weeks only if you and i have actually talked or you know emailed or messaged about the hierophant tier the high priestess tier then you know that you can you can kind of come on in um but for everybody else zoom bookings are kind of booked up so that's going to be the next best thing is to get that that box for you guys okay so let's go ahead and talk about this week ahead here we have our handy trusty glyph key down here where we have the signs sorry the signs over here aries through pisces these are the flavors of how everything is going to express itself and then in the middle column over here we have the aspects these are i did this backwards but these are the relationships between the sources of energy conjunction to the square and then over here we have the planets and these are the sources of energies this is what creates all kinds of you know change and disturbance and gifts and blessings and rewards and triggers events and triggers moments in our lives is, is these sources of energies these planets interacting with us we are sources of energies as well 
Okay, so let's bring up the Aspectarian. Okay, and then I have in red, I highlighted what's going to be like the highlight, you know, basically, essentially. So, get this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with... Oh, I didn't figure out how I'm going to do this. Okay. Monday, Monday, October the 24th, I'm calling this day smart strategy. And this entire week, you guys can expect some headlines, some, you know, just not just like on the world stage, but also in your own life. Yeah, I was going to try to be cuter. You know, I, I was really feeling like this Liz Taylor. I don't even like Elizabeth Taylor, like as a human being, like as a person, but you know, purple eyeshadow I just always feel like it's very Liz Taylor so anyway but then I just gave up and I'm like no we're just gonna be like we're just gonna do this so okay back to Monday this is actually Sunday there we go Monday October the 24th I am calling smart strategy the moon the moon is going to be in Libra going to be conjuncting Mercury in Libra and also trining over to Mars in Gemini so as you can see we've got a nice little pile up happening it's going to go from libra energy into scorpio energy every sun moon mercury and venus are all going to be crossing over the south node so we're going to have the eclipse this week and then we're going to get like multiple activations as the week goes on Whew. okay so on monday smart strategy let's be let's be smart here let's be really smart so that moon in libra you know is with mercury and this is really like the last little nicey nice, like maybe. I feel like we already let go of the nicey nice over the weekend with the sun and Venus entering into the sign of Scorpio. Like I, I feel like we're already, masks have dropped, you know, and everything that was subtextual up until this time, you still maybe saw it and knew it in Libra season, but it wasn't like, it still had that veneer of civility over it. It still had that that fakery, the mask on top. Even though everyone knew the truth, well, this is like now we don't have it. Scooby Doo, we got some work to do now. Mask is gonna fucking ripped off. So you know, I feel like the moon with Mercury is still trying to still trying to keep the mask on. You know. Um, but that square, that moon conjunct Mercury and Libra is going to square over to Pluto and Capricorn. And um, that's just going to be very difficult for relationships. It's going to be very cagey. So there's going to be someone or some element in your life. Maybe you're trying to do it. Maybe you're trying to like keep things together. <laughs> keep the, um, maybe you're trying to keep the peace together. You're trying to keep that nicey nice together. And then that square over to Pluto is like, someone's paranoid, someone's cagey, someone just is going to cut straight to the truth of the matter. Someone's going to call something out. Someone's going to, you know what I'm saying? So I just, even with the trying to Mars and Gemini, Mars is super powerful right now, stationing to go retrograde. So it's got this like element of the past kind of brought up into it, but it's like, kind of like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't fucking care. You know, like, this is why I really don't like my hairline because like look at all of this but it's like i don't fucking care anymore like i don't care like it is what it is you know what i'm saying i have a little colic instead of a widow's peak i, I love widow's peaks but you know like it is what it is it's like whatever <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's like there's gonna be that libra energy that wants it to be like perfect and pretty and copacetic and on the same page and like really trying to like let's broker this deal like i want to get the deal done let's just make it happen come on let's do but no not that square to pluto pluto is like no 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 that's that's not realistic or that's not how i feel about it or you know what i'm saying so the trying to mars moon mars is always going to be like people feeling very hot button very adrenaline junkie energy so i'm just going to say like if you're trying to push something across the table, like unless everyone is really comfortable with total, complete, 100% honesty, whoever is still trying to make it palatable or nicey nice, that's going to be the person that's going to get like the, whoa, you know, like what all happened? What, you know, so, you know, just be smart about what's going on. 
smart strategy is what I'm calling on Monday. Oop. Okay. Turn my Tuesday, Tuesday. Here we are on Tuesday, Tuesday, the 25th. I'm calling magnifying what was hidden. This is your eclipse. This is your solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. Actually, let's get this a little big. Give me a second here. I think this is really big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. This is your solar eclipse in the sign of... Actually, I think I had it on a whole sign before. Where was that? Hold on. Let me just take a moment to just find this again. Um, was that it? No. Is it that? Yeah, there we go. I had it on. I, I like to keep it on Placidus. So. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Sorry. Um. There we go. All right. There. Cleaner. Probably easier for you guys to read. So there we have the whole sign houses. Lock clear. Partial, penumbral, solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, that moon in Libra, dark moon, very, very dark. That could have been like the day before on that Monday, like a last ditch effort, but no go, no go. Here we are, mask ripped off, partial solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. And, you know, this is an uncovering, it's excavating, it's turning over the rocks to find the little buggies underneath it. This is uncovering fears, secrets, feelings, and attitudes, um, financial attitudes, financial truths, sexual attitudes, sexual truths, disclosures of all kinds. And here's the thing. It's a, it's new. It's a solar eclipse, but it's a south node solar eclipse. So the activations that are going to be happening are going to be kind of more focused on like the shedding and the purging and letting things go. But here's the thing. You're going to be very cognizant of what you what you have to let go or what's leaving your life and you have no control over it. So whatever is leaving at this time, you I'm just, guys don't hold on. Save yourself the dignity. Save your dignity. Whatever wants to leave, just let it leave. Just let it go because you cannot stop it. So for some, it's going to be, I have to accept this truth about my family. I have to accept um, the truth of my financial situation. I have to accept the truth of my um, relationship, my marriage, my living situation. You know, it's going to be something different for everyone. Um, so I, I feel like it's, it could be internal and external. Like you, like there's the environment physically, structurally changing that you've got to accept. But you're going to be cognizant of what you do have to let go of because of something else taking place because of, and you know, Venus is here. So there, there could be something new taking place because of women or a woman's issue or um, because of a financial disclosure, because of a sexual disclosure, because of some kind of very, very deep, dark truth. You know, it's like whatever that is like uncovering, it's like we have to, um, like this is just happening. It's all happening. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't really stop it. It's got, you know, momentum. And this is the first real like solar eclipse that we had. I remember the one in November of 2021 that the, the nodes hadn't shifted yet though. The nodes, I believe, were still in Taurus and I see they were still in Gemini, Sagittarius. So it was like a little bit of a, a taste of what was to come. So here we are in our partial solar eclipse in Scorpio. And so if you have any planets or points around the early degrees of the fixed signs, Scorpio, of course, Taurus, of course, Leo, and Aquarius. You know, this is going to be very effective. This is going to be very, like, consequential. You're going to be feeling this one. Um, and, like, honestly, guys, like, you, with Eclipse energy, you never want to go and try and manifest. You usually want to just try and timeline jump instead. Manifesting focuses on specific 
outcomes, like a specific thing. And timeline jumping just moves you on a whole different path of goodness, of what's better for you, of what's best for you. So that if you try to like, if you're the actor, if you're the one taking action over these eclipse energies, it's just going to go very sideways. Like it's going to go very wild and unpredictable and it may not be in your favor. The only exception could be if you were born on an eclipse because those people are freaking wild and they, they're they the catalyst for change in other people's lives all the time. They have that stamped into their little bodies. So, you know, for everybody else, for the rest of us, you respond from an empowered place. Okay. Respond, don't react. This is all about power. Scorpio... It's, Scorpio energy is all about power, the power to bond with someone else and form a powerful alliance because of what you share with someone else, what you give and what you receive. That portal has to be a two-way flow of abundance for Scorpio to be happy and it has to be deep, it has to be authentic, it has to be real. That's why the nicey nicey drops because that's just not cutting it anymore. It's not, it's not, it's no, no, like get that bullshit out of here, you know, so the power lies in the boundary that you put up when it's a black hole instead of that two-way flow of what should be abundance. But if you're only giving into the portal, it's a black hole, okay? If you are only being drained, if you're giving so much and not getting anything back, it's a black hole. And Scorpio uses the power to put up that boundary and say, no more. You don't have access to me. You don't have proximity to me. You don't have privacy with me. You have nothing with me. It is zero, you know, and that fixed sign energy is kind of like, like that, like fixed sign energy, you know, if you slight a Leo, if you embarrass a Leo, especially publicly, like you're going to pay for that, like the rest of your life, like they're never going to get over that. You know what I'm saying? So all of the fixed signs have something like that where they're like, you know, I want to do like a mohawk. I want to do like an actual feeling very okay, I like how it's like this. Um, you know, so all of the fixed sign energies, they can all kind of be like that. So, you know, whatever this is activating for you, this is gonna be um this can definitely be things that are shut out. You might shut things out, or things might be shut out to you, and you just have to accept that. Like you have to have the courage of your conviction to know that this is the right thing for you to put up that boundary. Now, people are going to be really freaking paranoid. This can also be very delusional. This can be very, like, how do I put this? Like dark Scorpio. Dark Scorpio energy could be manipulative and possessive and controlling. So, you know, if people are trying to inappropriately see it, it's it's one thing when you're putting up a boundary to protect yourself you know if you have um your best friend that or your sister or something that that just entered into an abusive relationship you have to either pretend like you don't know pretend like you know never talk about it or you have to have like a boundary with that if that's something that is really um if if if, if that affects you if you're if you're empathic or whatever you know you have to have some kind of way to to either have that relationship in a way that does not hurt you or you have to just totally step away from that and not have anything to do with that have a clear boundary with it you know what i'm saying it's like that kind of thing now the improper way that people are going to be using this energy is that they're going to self-sabotage through manipulative maneuvers and being super possessive and over controlling of other people's sexuality, other, so this, this is going to be like for, it depends on where you are in your level of consciousness. Are you good with boundaries? Do you love the bonds that you have with people? Are you, are they deep? Are they um, empowering? Is it mutually beneficial? Because if they're not, it could be very revealing how sour it is or how rotten it is or how toxic it is. You know, you're going to be feeling physically sick or you're going to be losing money or you're going to be tired you're gonna your energy is gonna be just drained or you're gonna be really scared all the time or you're gonna be really worried about something you know if you're worried about you know a spouse cheating on you or something that has nothing to do with like a third party situation that's totally you and the spouse that's totally some kind of rottenness in that trust something is eroding in that trust it has nothing to do with anybody else it has nothing to do with the posters 
they're looking at or like whatever it happens to be the root is rotten you know what i'm saying so it's like this solar eclipse i feel like is going to really show all of us in that area of life you know what's trying to flush away the rottenness that's trying to the waste the waste okay scorpio rules the waste management systems the pooping you know all of that stuff so it's like don't try to just like hold on to that you know like you don't want to like, hold on to that you know just let it freaking flush so you know that's going to happen and then but the new thing that could start here could be so empowering it could be so supportive so you know what where are you in your life and in this scorpio area of life because something new is starting but you will have to be letting go of the waste first and you're going to have that with the activations between you know over the next couple of weeks it's going to be like but here's the thing it's think of the universe is like a vacuum like when there is something like empty it'll rush to fill it with something else okay so if you just let go what wants to leave if you just let die what wants to die and not try to hold on with your cold dead fingers then then you'll see the new that's trying to come into your life and what universe is going to try to rush to fill that space. But you have to be smart enough to hold the boundary and to let go. Because if you're still trying to hold on and you're still trying to grip it, it's going to be a lot more painful for you um, because it's going to be like the deeper lesson that you're trying to learn through. Sorry. The deeper lesson that you're trying to learn through um because then it's like compounded lessons so you'll either let this eclipse wipe everything away and then you can kind of continue on the right momentum but if you have some lessons to learn around detachment and releasing and letting go then it's just going to be a little bit longer and guys like that's why we never judge where anyone is in their spiritual like lesson learning like we're all learning something here you know what i'm saying so Yes, it's a big flush. Yes, it's a big purge, but there's something new there. And that's what I'm really excited about because this scorpionic energy is going to be about reinforcing your confidence because the North Node's in Taurus. So the drive is going to be towards self-confidence, resources, our own skills, talents, and abilities, loving our sexuality, loving our creativity, and being really, really in touch with all of those different parts of us. So, you know, yes, there's these flushings, but it's like, use it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever is going on in the astrology at any given point, use it. So how are you going to be resourceful and using these flushes to just clear house and get rid of, you know, just let it go. If it wants to go, just let it go. You know, what ego, okay? Ego, let the ego go. You... Are going to be so empowered and so happy if you let go of the ego and the fears the fears are probably they're probably connected somehow you probably whatever you're fearing probably has to do with an ego attachment so i'm telling you guys just telling you guys all right so i didn't even talk about any of the aspects this is just the solar <laughs> this is just the solar eclipse partial solar eclipse. So, you know, I already went through this for all 12 zodiac signs in our October monthly. So that's over on the Patreon, the Knights turned above. So all of um, you guys, all my Knights have already had this info for like, I don't know, like over a month already. So, you know, it'll be good. It'll be really good. It'll feel good. It'll feel like a load is lifted off of your plate. Honestly, you know, like it's only when you try to hold on, do you feel like the pain? So whether it's an attitude or an ego attachment or an identification or a physical possession, whatever happens to be, you take the power back. You take the power back and you feel good about whatever's going on. Okay. Um, is there anything? It's just the solar eclipse. Oh, okay. So I would say um, if you can, I would wait. I would wait for the moon to be actually... Hmm. You know, the guidance is usually to wait after a new moon, like a, a couple of days to like do stuff and start stuff. And I usually like to be in that zero with infinite space. You know, I don't always wait for that. But I will tell you on this, don't 
let it be a couple days because you just like if you do start something like when the moon's in scorpio depending on where it is in relation to that south node it's like you might start something that's you're going to end up losing anyway or you're going to start something that is, it might have or it might go through some kind of super traumatic like flushing and super deep transformation so i would just give it a couple days I'll just give it a couple days um yeah so you know and it doesn't mean that the loss has to be super like for instance it doesn't always have to mean that like a taurus sun moon rising is losing a relationship for some taurus sun moon risings they're losing a relationship the whole relationship has gone rotten but for some taurus sun moon risings it's losing a toxic part about the relationship that can no longer continue so if that connection is super tight, super strong, then it's a good thing to let that toxicity purge out of the connection and it will make your connection even stronger. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it it just can't go on the way it has gone on before. It's deep, permanent, irreversible change. So, you know, it, if it's meant to really stay, then whatever that Scorpio area of life, it will have to change irreversibly moving forward it cannot continue as it has gone on before so this is like a very deep healing energy like scorpio is like the deepest it's super super healing it can be very transformative and healing on the most profound level so wherever this area of life is if you can let go of the ego if you can let it transform and get turned inside out and just go with that ride just trust like trust that it's all happening for your best interest and just see what you get because it'll be a lot more fortified be a lot more fortified okay i think we're ready to move on to wednesday wednesday i am calling this day conscious karma i'm calling this day conscious karma because we do have that mercury in where is it mercury? libra that Mercury and Libra is trining over to Mars in Gemini. We also have the moon in Scorpio, that same moon in Scorpio trining over to Neptune and Pisces. And then we have this T-square. Oh boy. Where we're going to have the moon in Scorpio opposing Uranus and Taurus. And then they're going to T-square Saturn and Aquarius. So if you have any planets or points in Leo, <laughs> oh my god, this is... Like around that 18 degree point, you're going to be like, sorry, I'll be like laughing at it. I'm just saying like, you're just going to, it's going to be like a little pile up for you guys. So, okay, let's break it down. Mercury trining over to Mars. Bam. 24 degree Libra trining over to 25 degree. Now, because Mars is, Mars is also the dispositor of the solar eclipse. So that's a very, very I should have said that it's a very big deal it's a very big deal because it means that whatever this purge and this flush is it's probably going to send us into the mars retrograde and whatever is new and starting up is also going to be partly constructed from the gemini area of life of what we're going back to redo in that i'm gonna get there but you know let's just continue okay so mercury trining mars this kind of discussion it's more like the reconsiderations of where and how you mobilize your efforts and you know like you're you're probably already thinking you're probably already thinking about the ideas or what you want to do differently i have to wait to wash my hair because i have like a special hair hair for my blue that comes in like after i film this sorry a little distracted um that's very mars and gemini so that mercury's trying to mars you're probably already thinking about the changes or the plannings or like the mobilizations and you're probably already thinking and you might even be talking with other people, um, especially if you're going to start something back up again in that Gemini area of life coming up. Now, the trine that the moon is going to be making over to Neptune, honestly, that's either going to exacerbate delusions and fears and paranoia or it's going to be very, very helpful for your healing like I'm already seeing people that are just like they're you're everyone's kind of in their own version of reality and so if someone's projecting something onto you that isn't real or if they're having 
like you can really see people every everyone's like in their own little bubble and you can really see like if people are really stressed out or if people are really upset or if people are really happy or if people are really excited and excitable you can just really that's always them you know the things that people comment that's nothing about whatever it is that they're commenting on it's all them 100 percent you know what i'm saying so if i make let's go with that example if i make a comment on a video or something and you know it's really positive sure i'm saying something about the video but first and foremost i'm saying something about myself if i make a comment on a video and it's super negative i'm kind of commenting on the on the content of the video but i'm really exposing myself you know what i'm saying so that's what i'm saying like this scorpio energy i feel like even people being manipulative and um, paranoid and delusional and trying to be possessive and controlling and very ego centered ego driven the higher consciousnesses are going to see that loud and clear so it's going to be like the toddler that thinks they're getting away with something and all the adults in the room can plainly and clearly see that they're not getting away with anything so that's the same thing with these lower levels of consciousness when you're in those lower vibrational frequencies is that everyone or that's why you guys don't want to get sucked into any of this you guys don't want to get sucked into anger or fear or jealousy or you know whatever happens to be because you're you get brought down with that and then you're not going to be able to get any good ideas or think of a solution or innovate anything new and different because you're going to be dropping down to that level so the only way that happens is if you believe something could be true and what they're saying you know if your spouse accuses you of something and it's absolutely groundless and ridiculous you won't be triggered by it so you're not going to respond like in that same drama that they're accusing you of it the ex only exception to that is like narcissistic relationship or someone that's an actual narcissist because they're always going to be like that and they're always that they're, they're going to gaslight you so unless it's gaslighting and they're really good at gaslighting then that's like a very special different rare situation let's just say you're in a normal relationship and then everyone's like a fucking normal human being in person and stuff like that then that's saying what they're going through they're projecting it onto you because that's what they are ever we're all only saying who we are people don't see things as they really are people see things as they are so just keep that in mind that whatever you get from people whatever is coming up that's just who they are don't ever take any of that personally even when they're talking about you or saying something about you because they're just saying something about themselves i hope i'm making some sense here sometimes when i talk too long like i have no idea if i'm you know, as much as like the camera here. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so that moon trining over to Neptune, people are just going to see whatever they want to see, like whatever level of consciousness they're at. They're just, that can be super healing. Like I said, it could be super like penetrative and they could be really accessing some higher realms and talking with angels and spirit guides or their own creativity, connecting with their own sexuality, you know, getting really like really high off of their own like consciousness and their own awareness you know or watching a great movie whatever or like i said it could be total delusion they just like spiral out of control with it and here's like the hard part is that t-square and i highlighted it here in the aspectarian that t-square that this moon is making with fucking uranus t-squaring saturn and aquarius which is still operational like all month of october from October the 3rd is when the last hit went pretty exact at 18 degrees. So here's another activation of that. It doesn't have to activate anything from the beginning of October. It can, doesn't have to be. Um, but this is definitely, you know, you're building on the new. Moon has just really crossed the south node. So when the moon crosses its own node, its own orbital pathway, that's even more karmic. What do I mean by karmic? I mean the law of cause and effect. Karmic just extends beyond this lifetime into past lifetimes of cause and effect. That's all karma is. It's the law of cause and effect. That's it. So, um, consequences. Oh, how does it go, the TikTok sound? 
It's from the hall. It's it's to the tune of the Hall of the Mountain King. You know, the no consequence, 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 running from the consequences of my actions, something like that. So that's kind of what I'm getting with this. But I mean, the T square. Here's what here's what it is because it's a solar eclipse, a partial penumbral solar eclipse. I'm saying, what am I calling this day? Conscious karma. So a lot of new karma is being written on a T square. That's a lot of pressure, and it's in fixed signs, which do not budge don't want to budge very difficult to get fixed signs to budge and to change and think different or be different or whatever so it depends what state of mind are you in what emotional attitude what perspective will you see through when you are writing your new karma okay this is something that you cannot ignore something's coming up you can't ignore it and you how are you feeling how are you thinking are you calm are you scared are you panicked are you um offended are you you know like what wh where are you at where are you at that'll determine how you respond to this situation it could be like a little crisis it could be some kind of breakdown all these areas of life the taurus area of your life is throwing a fucking fit the scorpio area of life is going through some kind of crisis and then the aquarius area of your life is giving you a lot of pressure and responsibility and like, you're just feeling like, holy fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all these areas of life. And then I'm like, I'm saying, if you have any Leo energy, it's like, then that's going to really scream for your attention too. So these areas of life, something, something's changing hugely. And you will want to respond calmly, if that's at all possible. Do the best you can with what you have. But you know, expect something unexpected expect um possibly issues with authority possibly issues with freedom you feeling like you're allowed to do something you feeling like you are giving permission for someone else to do something there's there could be something with um how free do you really feel you know this uranus energy I have my moon and Mercury in Aquarius, like freedom is a big fucking thing for me, you know, but it's like, it's the, the overcompensation though. Let me speak to that. The overcompensation is where you just want to fucking run around just for the sake of exercising the freedom, even if that's not what you're really feeling. That's when you get the Aquarius energy that just, they just want to be seen as different just to be seen as different or they want to be cool just to look cool or they want to look like they don't care what people think just to look like they don't care what people think and it's not real and it's not authentic you know um aquarius energy we're all super different already not all of us like leather jackets not all of us you know what i'm saying so that uranus energy could feel kind of like wild and super cagey and just want to break out just for the sake of breaking out so make sure that that's authentic Saturn's in Aquarius. So it's putting a lot of pressure on that very thing that I just spoke to. This is also plastic surgery. This is also aesthetics. This is also um, how we look in groups, how we get our ego needs met, depending on like the groups that we're in, our alliances, who we're associated with. All of that stuff has to be fucking honest and real with this solar eclipse in Scorpio. It's like, where do we really stand? in ourselves, with ourselves, with our own individuation, are we confident in who we are, and then where we stand with other people, and how much leeway and how much freedom is there to grow, to be different, to decide, I'm going to be vegan, I'm not going to be vegan, I'm going to be pescatarian, I'm going to um, try to live in a van for a year, I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, like, you're going to, you're going to feel a pinch on this day, on Wednesday, you're going to feel the pinch and you're going to be writing new karma. This is a very new energy and things are still breaking down because Saturn and Uranus are still in this square. So that's why I'm saying like meditate. Of course, I'm going to say meditate, like meditate every day. But, you know, this is an especially karmic moment where whatever you're doing, whatever you're saying, whatever is happening is writing new karma. So cause and effect what kind of effect do you want what kind of cause do you want you know what i'm saying so it's like it's just like a very 
just try to be as conscious as possible. I, I'm guessing this is going to be like a lot of triggering happening, you know, whether it's an authority or a burden or a responsibility that you're just like, I don't want this anymore. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to fucking do this anymore. Like, this is fucking hard. Or whether you're feeling like I need to, I need to break out of here. Like, I can't do this anymore, <laughs> you know, or whether it's like, this is no longer true for me. This does not feel honest and authentic for me. Or whether this is something more like, I'm going to say this could even be, let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about some of the positive here. Like if you're very consciously creating karma from this energy, I can totally see this as some kind of wonderful breakthrough where if you've already been pushing for authenticity, if you've already been pushing for honesty, if you've already been facing your fears, guys, I don't know what it was, but it was that quarter moon, the waning, losing in light quarter moon in Cancer last week, like the 16th, 17th, Sunday, Monday. That's when I confronted, like, I feel like I confronted all of the last fears that I have, like in life, and I feel like amazing. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it was that that triggered that, but I don't know. I feel really great. So, you know, if you've already been on a track of like facing fears and just really confronting them and really i don't want to say surrender like in a like in a hokey way i mean surrender in like in an empowering way oh, that sounds strange anyway if that's been the case this is what you've been asking for this is what you've been waiting for this is your breakthrough where you can break through something that's been holding you back you can break through something that has been stagnant where you can break through something that's been dishonest where you can break through some of your own ego where you can break through um, some community or group or association break through some glass ceilings. So I think it's a pretty freaking cool time. Cool time to be alive. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Oopsie. So good. All right. <laughs> Thursday, Thursday, the 27th of October. I'm calling pressure and pushiness. So... So we have that Mercury in Libra. Look at that Mercury in Libra. Trying to really hold on. <laughs> Trying to really hold on to like manners, decorum, you know. Trying so hard. Squaring over to Pluto and Capricorn. No. No, it's not happening. And then we also have that moon in Sagittarius trining over to Jupiter and Aries, which is just so larger than life and so big. So let's start. Let's start with that Mercury trining, excuse me, squaring over to Pluto. So Mercury's trying to hold on to that last shred of civility. I'm so into surrealism. I'm sorry. I can't make everything a surrealist satire. Okay. So Mercury... <laughs> Mercury and Libra. Um, I watched Fight Club this past weekend. I got through it because I'm so not into a, some some acts, a certain actor in that movie. But um, I got through it. That just so you guys know, like everyone that like idealizes Fight Club, that was written by a gay man, and he was talking about how white male fragility leads to radicalization, like easily radicalization. Anyway, so. Mercury and Libra squaring over to Pluto and Capricorn. So what I'm seeing here, um, jealousy, possessiveness, <sighs> problems with ownership, projections, or and or unapologetically honest. So that Mercury and Libra is going to try to be nicey-nicey, and then that Pluto and Capricorn is like, no. Kind of like earlier in the week, what was it, like Monday? Was it Monday? Yeah, it was Monday that we had the moon conjunct Mercury and squaring over to Pluto and Capricorn. So this square is building. It's been building like all week. And it's and it's just like when it goes exact, there could be some kind of pressure pop, something that kind of... If someone's been... If someone's been putting something off, that Mercury and Libra, if they've been delaying... If they've been putting it off. Now that Mercury and Libra went through a bunch of oppositions to Jupiter. Okay. Part of the retrograde with Virgo, you know, so it's like 
you already fucking talk you were you already got all the information you talked this fucking shit to fucking death you talked about it you thought about it you saw more information come out about it and now now you're gonna try to just go back on all of that and just be nicey nicey and go on as if you didn't have all that conversation as if you didn't have what were those dates give me a second here because i think i have the paper right here and if i do then i will tell you i do September the 1st, September the 18th, October the 11th. Around those days is when Mercury opposed Jupiter. So, you know, there's been a lot already. We did, you know, so that square to Pluto is basically going to say, well, now the change is happening. You know, like now it gets really real. It gets really real. So, you know, if, if you've been trying to negotiate if you've been trying to get permission if you've been talking with a mentor if you've been if your mind little brain's been expanding because of something you're learning with that jupiter sorry that jupiter um energy this square to pluto is like okay let's integrate this and this integration might be a little bit painful okay it might be might might mm, might, it might be a little bit you know difficult and there, there could be some it's like after all of that back and forth with the mercury jupiter opposition now the truth comes down to like are you going to get the permission or are you not going to get the permission are you going to give the permission or are you not going to give the permission are you you know what i'm saying so it, and it could be a power struggle it could be a total like tit for tat power fucking struggle and it could just be ugly i would not choose this whole week it's kind of gnarly honestly and in eclipse season like i just would i just i would see what universe is like showing you and giving you and then making the best out of it making the very best out of it and like i said i don't remember when i said it but i said it about just just focus on whatever your fears are whatever your ego drives are and just overcoming that if you can just overcome your fears and your ego everything fucking will be a fucking peach Now I want a peach. Now I want peaches. Okay. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about that moon in Sagittarius trining over to Jupiter in the sign of Aries. Is this the, the Cindy Lou Who? Oh my god, the Grinch. Okay. That trine is just going to blow everything out of proportion. Like on the Mercury Pluto square, that's not going to be kind. Like that's okay. So, on one hand, depending on how you're working the energy, it could be optimistic. Okay. It could be very much like I see the vision, I see where this is going. Now, depending on where this Mercury Pluto is happening in your life, that could just be something that's not really having to do with you personally. Maybe it's like other stuff in your life that is changing and you're like, holy shit, you know, and you're just like watching it all happen with your popcorn. And so then you can use that moon Jupiter to be like, wow, things are like really changed. It's like if you're a kid and you're watching your parents do something really hard that will result in a better life for you. And you see them going through the pain and the hardship and the difficulty, but you're not like doing it, you know, like you're not part of it. So you're like, damn, that sucks. I'm so glad you're doing it for me, you know, then you, it, so, you know, kind of like have that with it too. It could be very high concept. This could be great for like ideas. I'm a Mercury square Pluto person. So like I live with that kind of a square energy all the time. And I write about suicide and serial killers and I'm really great with solving crimes and like mysteries and I'm a wonderful writer, you know, but it's like Mercury, Pluto, it's also like the mind is always like going like I, it's, I had to learn meditation. Otherwise, like I don't ever sleep, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you, there could be, but you know, people that are not born with that, they, they just might take that. It's like a, um, like having coffee for the first time ever in your life. And you're like, Ugh, you know, so anyway, with the, with the moon trying over to Jupiter, it could, on the negative, that could be very grandiose. That could be very, very grandiose grandiosity, you know? So I just, 
it, de- it depends. Like if this is like a negative situation, if something is really, if this is like a nasty power struggle, then feelings are going to be very inflated. Feelings are going to be very, very big. I mean, it's just, it could be, or it can go overboard. You know, it could be that delusions. I think Ted Bundy had a lot of Sagittarius energy, but it could just be a little bit grandiose, like in the negative you know, not as high concept, like a story, you know, like you're writing a story that's super high concept. It could be high concept in a way that it's like, you might be hearing things from people that are just delusional, like really, like you can see that they're just like going through something and don't argue with that. Like just leave, get out of there, like get out of the situation and the conversation, just remove yourself. Okay. Just remove yourself from the situation. Um, because you can't work with that. You can't ground somebody else. That's their responsibility. Other people's energies are their responsibilities. And if they're going with it, like if they're, if they're open to what you have to say, if they're open to your perspective, if they're asking you for your opinion, then yeah, then like, that could be amazing. That could be really wonderful. And that Mercury square Pluto could be really like a breakthrough in solving some kind of problem solving something you know a mechanical breakdown and you investigate it and you find the little thing all the jobs all like the normal jobs that i've ever had i've always once i learn the job like once i learn how it all works i've always been able to see the weaknesses and the exploits of whatever it is and because i'm because i'm an honest person i always told the owners I always told the authority I'm like hey look this is like someone can really exploit this vulnerability and they would like look at me like is that gonna be you are you gonna do it you know and I was just very innocent I just had no I didn't think you know what I'm saying so it's like it's a it's definitely like a criminal mind you're able to really think of every single little thing it's very Michael Corleone because he was told by his father, Don Vito, to think how other people think and anything is possible. So that Mercury Pluto could work to your advantage where you can be very strategic or it could work to your disadvantage if you're the one projecting some kind of crazy paranoia into a situation or if you're the one trying to like make a money grab for something or make some, you know, if people are, people are going to be, you're going to be seeing a lot of people acting very desperate and fear driven and ego driven over the next couple of weeks self-sabotaging all over the floors okay in your life on the world stage and if these feelings come up within you there's a lot on the patreon there's a lot on on the there, well not on the wholesome occultists yes but there's a lot on the artigan.com like i mean it's just you know okay so let's move on let's move on to friday friday october the 28th i'm calling this day go spiritual because that's always going to be the answer. It's always going to be the answer, but especially on Friday, because we're going to have Jupiter retrograde back into Pisces for the very last time. So you can think back to May 14th, 2021. It doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with that date. That's just like the last time that Jupiter was like specifically here. So for some of you, it might, doesn't like have to be, it could be the the theme, T-H-E-M-E, the theme that kind of returns and comes back up. But listen, we're never going to have this again. Like that Jupiter conjuncting Neptune, both of the rulers of Pisces together in Pisces, like that Pisces party we had earlier this year, never going to happen again. Would never going to happen again. So this is the last little bit of magic that you guys are going to have like for the rest of life of this type of this type. So I, I want to say this just depend like regardless of where this is happening in your life, your aura exists in quantum physics. Okay. And I'm very inspired because of the recent um, quantum entanglement with the Nobel Prize. So here we go. Your aura in quantum physics is called your quantum field. So there's like dark matter that's floating all around and it's all around you that your aura interacts and responds to the quantum field. Okay. So you have a ripple effect. Your thoughts have a ripple effect that go 
outwards. Your thoughts exist in wave form. You project that out like a laser. That's your masculine, divine masculine energy. That's your electric energy. And it goes forward. And it's very concentrated. And it goes out and it creates the ripple effect outward. Now, in the quantum field, the quantum field responds to those thoughts. It responds to that signal. That's your signal that you're sending out. Your thoughts are the quality of your sig Those are the signals, but it's the quality of those signals that determines everything else. So your heart, your divine feminine energy, your, your feelings, that emotional, that's your magnetism, okay? That's your magnetic field. Your heart radiates and creates your magnetic field, and both of these fields interacting create your aura. So your electric and your magnetic your electric masculine energy projects out. It sends the thought waves out. When you think thoughts, when you use your imagination, when you visualize, you are creating in the quantum field. You're creating in other dimensions. And when you are generating feelings and your own emotions, you are magnetically attracting that back. You send the thoughts outward and whatever your heart is doing attracts back into your life, okay? You can't just think and say to yourself, I'm so abundant, I'm so abundant. And then you feel fucking scared and you're shaking in your little boots or, you know, you're thinking like, I'm going to, you know, whatever it is, but your heart is just, it, the, the, it's a um, like broken signal or something. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. It has to be coherent. So that's your aura. Your desires are going to ripple out into the universe in wave form. And the quantum field responds like the boomerang. That's your karma. That's your cause and effect. And then you get that back. So you have your electric magnetic field, your aura. I'm going to stop there because we can go into like the earth's field and how you interact with that and the whole Schumann resonance. But we're going to stop there because I just want you to know that that's going to be the best way you use this energy wherever this is happening in your life, Jupiter, Neptune, in Pisces. Because it's going to be the quality of your thoughts and the quality of your feelings that you send out on the, it's going to be two months. You get two months of this and that's it. So the look at the quality of your belief systems. Look at the quality of your thoughts and your feelings in this Pisces area of life. Because I'm telling you right now, a lot of people are going to be the markets are going to show this, how fearful people are. Okay, the markets, politics, all of the big areas of life. Pisces energy can be so fearful and it just gets strangled in its own fear. So it's going to be fear. It could be paranoia. It could be neuroses. It could be um, like kind of parasitic in itself, which is kind of interesting. So, you know, that Jupiter going back into Pisces, you can think back to like late winter, early spring of this year, what you were losing faith in or what you were gaining more faith and belief in, but you decide what you want to use this for. That Pisces area of life, how are you going to make that the most magical fucking area of your life before Jupiter leaves? I think it's like the end of this year, maybe even like next year. And goes back into Aries. So, you know, how are you responsibly interacting with the universe, with your quantum field, and just taking as much responsibility as possible? Expanding your belief systems, expanding your faith, but doing so from an informed standpoint. Because you fucking had Jupiter and Pisces for a long time already. So this is like, the, just like Saturn and Aquarius. Like we've done this before. Like we, this last six months of the Saturn energy should be a fortification of the Aquarius area of life. It should not feel too heavy. It should not feel scary. Saturn rules fear. So you've been overcoming. You should overcome it by now. You should have overcome it by now. That fear um, in the Aquarius area of life. And if not, this is going to be a horrendous six months for you. I'm sorry, it will be. I'm going to tell it to you straight. Okay. So overcoming the fear is really overcoming fear and ego should be your only objectives to get through like the next couple of weeks. I mean, to get through life really, but you know, this is going to exacerbate 
those weak points in your soul, the weak points in your character, especially with the Jupiter ingre re ingress is the weaknesses because the Pisces area could be very, the mutable energies could be like, they don't want to commit to anything. They don't want to be firm and solid. They, you know what I'm saying? Just by nature, they want to be flexible and they want to move around. So, you know, that Jupiter in Pisces, that's why I'm saying you have the flexibility to reach the higher realms. You have the flexibility to affect the quantum field more. You have the flexibility, the porous boundaries between you and the infinite, you and the source of creation, you and even the galactic center, you and, you know, your God, your spirituality, your beliefs. The veil is thin. It's gossamer who is my favorite character in Looney Tunes, by the way, Gossamer was my favorite, but it's Gossamer. It's like a spider web little thing and you can reach it. You can reach for things that were impossible before and get them with these last couple months of Jupiter in Pisces. You can transcend boundaries. You can transcend limitations. You can transcend. And there's no limit. It's absolutely infinite. It's absolutely limitless. But if you want to use that energy to go into the fear and go and just think of the worst potentialities, that's the reality you're going to embrace. And that's what you're going to create for yourself. And you're going to, it's going to be hellish. You're going to create hell on earth or you're going to create heaven on earth, but it's you that's making that happen. It's you that's creating that. Okay. So now that I'm done scolding everybody about a Jupiter and Pisces, Oh, there's also, there's other stuff happening that day too. Um, I'm calling it ghost. I'm still calling it ghost spiritual. Um, because like I said, we're never going to have this again. So whatever you reach for, you can grab it now. Then you, then it's not going to be the same. You, you might not have that option. You might not have that accessibility. So you got two months to reach for it and grab it where you can grab it. Okay. Okay, other stuff happening that day, Moon in Sagittarius opposes Mars and Gemini. <sighs> so the bigger vision could be informed with more details, but possibly also more disagreements. So this could be another hot button issue where, you know, you might feel like inflammation, like emotionally inflamed because you have to go back to something or because of something happening. Now this Mars retrograde, and we're gonna talk about it, but you know, the moon activating this and, and giving you an emotional connection to it, you're probably needing to be kind of busy. There's gonna be circumstances that probably will like call and pull at your attention. And you know, and, and, and Mars is in this long square to Neptune. So it's, it's going back to correct Correct the image in action. That moon in Sagittarius is also going to square Neptune in Pisces. Double verify everything. Double verify everything. People are going to lie. They are going to overpromise. They are going to overcompensate. People are going to exaggerate. People are going to, and they'll even be deluded themselves. They may even really believe the lies that they're telling. Okay, but it's up to you to see that they're delusional. It's up to you to be in the highest consciousness possible. And we all learn. I mean, we're supposed to learn from our mistakes. We're supposed to learn through pain. There's two ways to learn. You can learn through pain, but you can also learn through joy. It doesn't always have to be pain, 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 pain cycles. It can be a reward cycle that you learn the most into. It could be learning through joy and growth and happiness and more awareness opening up that you wake up to new things. You wake up to new realizations because of how happy you are, because of how much joy you're experiencing, because of how much you're manifesting in your life. Oh my God, I manifested this. How cool. Let me do it again. Double verify everything. Let's move on to Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Saturday, we've got spidey senses, is what I'm calling Saturday. <gasps> Something I have to do. Spidey senses. Okay. <laughs> We're calling it spidey senses because Mercury. Well, let's make it. Just 
Jeez, when is this going to happen? Okay. Mercury enters Scorpio. The world really turns black and white. I'm telling you guys, as... Is that everybody? Yeah, that's everybody. Mercury, so Mercury's going to be the last... The last holdout for Libra, for the decorum, and for the, the nicey-nice. And then we get into... Now we're all in... Now we're in... Now we're rolling in the deep, okay? Like, fully. We're fully submerged. We're fully submerged. Now... I like Mercury and Scorpio because I'm a Mercury square Pluto person. So I like to, I, I, okay, so when I was a wee lass, um, my father would take my sister and I to like Borders, like the bookstore, and he would have a coffee and read magazines in the cafe, and then we would just like run around, and um, we always loved the witchy section, like even when we were like little, little, we loved that section. Um, there was a, my, that, so we just went to that first and just like to our heart's content. Um, and we could get one book each, we each could get one book. Um, but there was another section that I really liked and I got this one book that, um, he got me once it was called perplexing puzzles and tantalizing teasers. And it was all about, it was very Mercury Pluto. Like there was, I remember one had this image of a bull, like a drawing of a bull and he was eating grass and there was grass behind him and he was on a farm and in the middle of his stomach there was like dynamite and i got it immediately abominable do you get it abominable a bomb in a bowl it had stuff like that it had mc escher type puzzles and things like it was just very um like i love that stuff like i need a lot to like you know, that's why I love screenwriting. I love being a writer. I love creating universes. I love characters and I love complex characters. I love writing for um, my muses, people that inspire me. Like, I just love the in intricacies. So what I'm going to tell you is find something really intricate to get very, very passionate about with Mercury and Scorpio, because otherwise you that energy needs to run off and i don't want that energy for you to run off into getting yourself into trouble because you might point that beautiful energy onto your spouse and think and just like give them the heat and, and they're going to catch it and they're going to be like you know like that doesn't even make any sense but you might just get some crazy idea in your mind that like yes it does and this is why and you might be i don't know getting all crazy about it so you know don't do that just be, just go get some puzzles or something you know what i'm saying or just read like a mystery novel or whatever but that mercury in scorpio is all about the subtext all about the secrets about the strategy sex money sharing boundaries fears bonds all of that comes up for discussion so you're going to be thinking about it you're going to be talking about it even more so this is a great time to dive deep into your finances managing your investments collect, collect. i don't know what i was trying to say um collecting i was trying to say collecting collecting all of your you know multiple revenue streams managing your investments um, keeping an eye on your assets, generating in all of those things would be a really great Mercury in Scorpio thing to do. This can also be, of course, sexuality. This can also be, of course, anything creative and spiritual. You could be, this is a very strong time for the occult, you know, as you guys know, this is always the busy time for me. It, it hit pretty early this year when I got like super busy. This is always like the busiest time of the year. And, you know, it should be a great time of the year for you guys to get back into your spiritual practices, especially upping the protection. I would say start with the protection because you're not going to be able to do anything unless you've got like that clean slate, a clear palette when you're not depressed, when you're not anxious, when you're not in fear, when you're not ego driven, like super ego driven. You want to cleanse first. It's remember Bruce Lee, it's not about the increase, it's about the daily decrease hacking away at the inessentials first first and foremost you know so clean all that out it's a great time for that i do not recommend detoxing in the winter you might be able to do some of that like in the fall but not in the winter energies are really 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 low and you want to nourish yourself i would save detoxes and like cleanses for like spring and summer because there's so much abundance and there's already so much like nourishment where 
you're kind of already detoxing like in the winter in some way shapes and forms like everything's already dead so you don't really need to add to that but you know go as you're guided i'm not a healthcare professional please do not take anything that i say as like health guidance or advice thank you very much um so just like you guys are not going to be going and doing things and then you're sitting in the police station saying that i'm president and a t-a-l-e-e -E said that i should do this no okay um that mercury in scorpio is going to help you get to the bottom of little mysteries in the scorpionic area of your life also communications that the nicey nicey doesn't cut it anymore with mercury and scorpio it's gonna it, it needs to be real it needs to be authentic it needs to be honest or it's not going to be interesting or it won't be good it won't be good quality it's just not going to be picked up it's not going to be interesting it's not going to be addressed even like it might not even be addressed it might be totally ignored you know what i'm saying if it's not like substantive substantive you know what i'm saying so so that's your mercury in scorpio so these are also the areas this is also the area of life where there could be a lot of like turnover and change um because mercury honestly i always feel better when mercury leaves the sign of the retrograde shenanigans so even though we've been out of the shadow for many degrees now in Libra, I always personally feel a lot better from the Mercury retrograde when Mercury actually leaves the sign. So you guys can take a look at that. I think we exited the shadow like last Saturday. Yeah, I think it was, I, th I know it was eight degrees of Libra. So I think it was last weekend that we left the shadow, but I'm never, I always keep my little you know, spidey sense is really sharp until Mercury just fucking gets out of the entire sign. So, you know, Mercury started in Libra, retrograded back into Virgo, went cross Libra again, had all those oppositions to, um, there was a lot going on. So now that Mercury's in Scorpio, I feel like we're probably all going to be ready to, to move on with what is real what is authentic what we have been shown what has been coming up and to really start getting nice and intricate you know like a timepiece like a beautiful timepiece with all the little gears and all the little things you know so you know that's what that's what i'm looking forward to i think that's gonna be great i think it's gonna be great so i guess i didn't need to say that twice also on sat today we have the moon where did i write this down Um, no, that's it. That's all I want to talk about. Okay. Let's talk about Sunday. Let's move on to Sunday. So on Sunday, the 30th of October, holy moly, I knew this was going to be a long one because of the, the eclipse, but it, it is what it is. So on Sunday, the 30th of October, we have, I'm calling it powerful mobilization or destructive mentality. Mars retrogrades at 25 degrees of Gemini until January the 12th, when they will station direct at 8 degrees of Gemini. At least it's in the same sign. So it will the Gemini area of your life will take twice as much energy. Now, what's interesting is that there may be options that you have to take off the table so Mars can actually put away at some of the things that you had maybe initiated or got going or just had going on where your attention and your energy might need to be pulled to something that really needs it with the mars retrograde it is going to take twice as much energy to get something done if you are doing this unconsciously if you're doing this transit unconsciously it's going to be very frustrating um it's going to be very 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 frustrating because you're not going to want to give this your time and attention and energy you're not going to want to deal with this you're not going to want to go back and make it better or change it in any way shape or form but it's going to make you do it. It's going to force you to do it. And you're going to be very frustrated. That's just like a Mercury retrograde. If people are very unconscious, they don't want to go back and rethink these things. They don't want to go back and make it better. But Mercury retrograde is showing you the pain points. It's showing you the weak spots that you've got to fortify, that you've got to make it better. Same thing with the Mars retrograde. Mars retrograding in the sign of Gemini in this Gemini area of life is going to show you exactly where those weak points are. Um, specifically with your action taking, specifically with your drives and motivations. Are you driven by ego? Are you driven by what, what, what is it? What is your motivation? What is really important to you? What is worth the extra energy and effort and motivation? Because if you're using this consciously, you're probably reigniting something. You're probably getting something going that either didn't 
go well before or didn't go the way you wanted it to before or just didn't go at all like it just fizzled or it just fell flat or something so you know this is going to be something that's going to help you in the long run like it really will now if you're a gemini or the mutable signs you're going to be like natalie what are you talking about you know but like it really is okay it is it is it is it really is the things that really matter that you care about the most are going to be very much helped and supported by this mars retrograde because it's bringing that that effort here it's it's, it's almost like if everything's going to be hard in the Gemini area of life, and you only have certain amount of energy and motivation and willpower, you will choose your priority. You will you will know what your priority is because you have to choose one or the other, and you're going to choose what you really care about. You're going to choose what you really want. You're going to choose what's really important to you, and you know it's going to be. It might be frustrating. Like I said, if this is very unconscious, it could be frustrating. If it's more conscious, then you'll it'll be frustrating in the sense of um, that it's taking so much. So even if you're reigniting something, there could still be obstacles. There could still be right on time, right on time, obstacles, underscore the obstacles. There could still be obstacles. There could still be... Um, you know, I feel so bad. I had um, a different Zoom and I was... It, it, everything is alive. Everything is alive. Talk to everything. Everything talks back. It's it, it, Honestly, you guys, it's very surprising to me what is sentient and what is psychic when it talks to me. And so my, my plant... Um, I'm going to be treating, I'm, I'm treating my plant a lot better and um, it's uh, a promise I made and it's something that I'm very serious about and, you know, whatever happens, I will be taking care of the plant and I love my plant very much and I only have all the love and care and I will be so much better at taking care of my plant because I love my plant very much. You should talk to everything in your life like that. You should treat everything in your life, your physical body, your plants in your home, your actual home, your dwelling that you're living in, all of that jazz. So back to Mars. You know, this is going to, there. even when you're reigniting something, this could be like, you know, your attention is going to be brought here because it needs you. It, it, you know what I'm saying? It, it, this is almost like a problem, not a problem child. I, I would hate to say that. I don't even believe in bad behavior in children anymore, learning so much about like brains and brain development. But this could be like your child um, needs more help. They need more assistance. They need more of your attention. They need more of your care. They need more of your, they need more playtime. They need more um, tactile hand eye coordination stuff you know like they just they need that they need that for their development or you know whatever area of life this is for you so you know if you're um like just because it's up right here capricorn's up so for caps this could be like you know you're moving and you need to hire people and you need to you know get all that stuff organized and you get all or you need to hire people for something else or you need to let go of some people because they suck or you need to you know actually you know what this could be really great to um i wanted to do more pull <laughs> something more fitness driven so maybe so you know the sixth house would be great to to reignite something physical that i did um reignite some some daily physicality but whatever it happens to be you know it, it is going to be more um you're going to have to really mobilize it, it's going to be um It is going to be like really loud and like the child on the mother's skirt, like mom, 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 mom. It's going to be like that. Like that Gemini area of life is about to get really loud and sparky and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, you know, or if you're trying to, you know, because Capricorn's up, if you're trying to make room in your schedule for something, you have to cut out other things to make room for something else in your schedule. You know, it's going to be like, well, I really want this thing. I really want this thing. I want this thing more than I want to keep that. So I'm going to cut that out because I really want this even more. 
and there's a challenge and I'm going to overcome the challenge because I want it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, wherever this Gemini area of life is for you, that's where it's going to be, where you're going to be challenged to like make up your mind. And, and be, you know, so it's going to be, that's what it's going to be basically. All right. Also happening on Sunday, the moon is going to be in Capricorn, going to try and over to Uranus and Taurus. I love this so freaking much. I love that so much because I'm a moon in Aquarius, but the moon's also going to be crossing Pluto. Boop. Actually, this is the moment. This is the exact moment. Moon at 18 degrees of Capricorn trining over to, well, Taurus at 17, Uranus in 17 degree Taurus. So I love this energy because, you know, just pay attention to any exciting news. It's a breadcrumb for the future. Okay. So that, that Uranus activation, that North node activation, um, moon's going to be trining the North node as well as Uranus. So, you know, that Mars station, I would love this for you guys to reignite something and have some great success with it and meet the challenges head on make the changes in your schedule in your eating in your family in your career in your finances in your home and family in your communications in your writing in your travel plan wherever this is happening in your life make don't be afraid to make those changes choose your priorities wisely um, because you should see and feel that that's where the future is going that that's where you're supposed to be going you should feel emotionally very sober and very serious and very aligned with the future with these trines and especially with that moon crossing pluto you could feel very empowered you could feel very much like this is this is the thing you know like th this is how i'm supposed to change this this capricorn area of life this is this is right on time this is a transformation that's supposed to be happening this is empowering me to take me where i really want to go and live a life unlived and free me from the consequences of my unconscious actions and my subconscious motivations, that plutonic energy, you're going to be very aware of where you've fallen before because of self-sabotaging behaviors or your power issues or your authority issues or whatever it is with the Capricorn. But that trine over to the North Node and with Uranus and Taurus is helping you feel like maybe you have a new resource that comes in for you. You might have a resource now that you didn't have before. So it's going to help make that Mars and Gemini even more successful for you. It depends on what it's going to be for you. So, you know, if you're more, if people are more unconscious and that's going to, then this will be hugely depressing. If people are very unconscious, that moon in Capricorn is going to be E or energy crossing Pluto. You could feel like something has you under its thumb and you could fucking hate it. And you could want to break free. And this will be very frustrating because it's going to be on the station of Mars and Gemini. And you're going to be fighting in struggle. You know, you're going to have your own struggle. And it's going to feel, you could feel very persecuted. You could feel very, it could feel very unfair. It could feel very unfair. So, but if that's the case, then you're keep, it's an eight of swords where you're keeping yourself in the prison. You're keeping yourself you're you're letting yourself be led by your subconscious drives and motivations and whatever has power over you it's either your ego you're not changing what you need to change you're not letting something go because of your ego or because of your fears and so you're resenting this mars retrograde you're resenting that you know your kid needs more of you than you want to give them you're resenting that your schedule needs to change or you know you're resent you, you you're, you're going to have some bitter feelings so you know, it's, it's spooky season. People are going to be not wanting to realize that they're going to want to project it and blame their spouse. They're going to want to blame their marriage partner. They're going to want to blame their kids. They're going to want to blame you. They're going to want to, you know what I'm saying? So just don't catch any of that. Just stay away, stay away, focus on your own thing, stay in your own lane and only forge alliances and bonds with other people that can self-regulate that are themselves very empowered or that they that they're safe you know really vet people and make sure that they are um safe because if they're not safe with themselves if they hurt themselves if they hurt other people if they are, you know are very convenient whatever happens to be then how are you supposed to trust how are you supposed to trust them this is gonna be a very big time for trust right now do you trust yourself do you trust other people do you trust the person that you're with do you trust 
what's going on in your life. Do you, how much trust do you really have? Because the less trust people have, the more they're going to project their insecurities. If they don't trust themselves, they're projecting it right onto you. If you trust yourself that when you see someone fuck up and really, you know, you gave them a chance and they fucked up, you forgave them, you gave them another chance and they're still being, you know, shitty with you, you trust yourself to put up a boundary and protect yourself. And then you don't worry about them anymore. You don't think about them. You don't stress out about them. You don't have anxiety or fears about them because you trust yourself that you're going to put up a boundary when someone fucks with you. And then that's it. They don't hurt you because they can't because you trust yourself to take care of yourself and to make changes in your life and not care what the fuck anybody thinks. Get a new group of friends. Works at a different place. Find a new job. Move to a new town. You can do fucking anything. You are a grown adult. You can get a car. You can get a job. You can move. You can stay. You can do anything you want. So what is, what, what's the fear? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the fear? Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to your tarot. All right, now that I've really laid it in. Okay, let's take a look. Ooh, sorry, you heard that. Let's take a look. Gosh, my hair is just wild, man. So wild. Okay. Any message for this week ahead for this partial solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio? I really feel like if you guys just focus on overcoming your fear and overcoming your ego, you're going to sail. You are going to sail. The first card out, and it's an itty bitty little page of pentacles. This could be a writing project. This could be writing or logging or um, ledgers, any kind of like documentation, manuals, guides, PDFs, anything like that. Starting something, starting a new job, starting a new project, starting a new something, or just someone that's starting new. <gasps> okay, Ace of Swords, love it. Ace of Swords, the truth comes out, the truth shall set you free. This is also a victory. Now, you see those two little things there? That's the balance between severity and grace. So anything that you are starting, anything that is very new, you are being called on to balance that victory with gracefulness. That can also be a huge conversation or a very big, like I said, a win, especially like a legal win or something. Another message might be at the end of Let's look ahead. And we have the Emperor. Damn, that's like that's like um Daddy's home. You know, that's like permission. This is like this is someone who's been married and divorced four times. They have empires that have risen and fallen. They've had companies that went under and bought more companies. They've been in business and out of business, and they've just like They've seen everything, you know. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. But that's like the head poncho. That's like the big boss. Oh, the six of pentacles. Okay. So this is that portal of even, even give and take. The flow of two-way abundance. Love it. Bottom of the deck, you have the five of wands. You have the knight of wands. You have the magician. Wow. Wow. Okay, so overall, you may have objections or distractions to you, like, getting your way or doing what you want to do or accomplishing what you want to accomplish, but I wouldn't worry about it. These are ants. These are, this is little petty stuff. You know, this is, the five of wands is like annoying. It's not anyone that can actually stop you or hurt you or do anything to affect your outcome unless they get into your mind, unless they get into your heart, unless they just take your attention away, you know? Like that's all they can do. All they can do is really distract you with pettiness. You know, this is like, this isn't really, 
apply for me personally, but if you have like a family party and like there's one family member that you like absolutely hate and they just like ask you all of the questions that like you hate and that are really intrusive. Guys, I'm telling you, like there's a couple thoughts that if I get the sads nowadays that I think and I'm so happy. One of them is like, I don't ever have to go to school ever again if I don't want to. Like no one can fucking make me. Another one is certain jobs that I've had. No one can ever make me go back to those jobs. No one can make me. I don't ever have to go back ever again. But the third one is the people. Like, I don't have to ever sit with a dinner that I don't like. I don't have to see anyone that I don't like ever again. No one can make me be around anyone I don't want to be around ever again. I never have to suffer through some, you know, um, restaurant uh, holiday because, you know, I'm, I'm accommodating somebody out. You know, like, I don't ever have to do any of that ever again and it's so empowering like it makes me feel so free and happy and safe that it's just it just always reassures me that every single time so that's kind of like what i'm getting with this is like don't like literally give your power away don't give your power away to like whatever like little distractions are it looks annoying it looks really annoying but if you're the magician like why do you care What's this page of pentacles? Page of pentacles, king of swords. This fucking card. The fuck? <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm like, where's the fucking book? Okay. Fondling the magic of the black orchid. Love is made of strength. True love is capable of going beyond strength. There are different kinds of strength. <sighs> This is business. This is someone that this could be a really um, strong professional, someone whose mind is very, very strong, like someone who can strategize and not get like personal feelings involved, someone that can see beyond, maybe even see beyond people's motivations and their own weaknesses. This is like when you're able to see a situation when you can see how everyone's upset this is like why it could be like a, a therapist or a counselor or a lawyer or some kind of professional, someone that can see outside of the situation, that can see everyone, like everyone's motives or everyone stands. Um, but in this case, it has something to do with a project or with some kind of ledger or bookkeeping or, you know, something like that where they're really pouring through it. So this is this could even be some kind of audit, some kind of financial audit, some kind of financial bookkeeping thing. So Maybe someone's just going through and making sure that everything is really like well organized. Like I said, if you're man, if you have like, if you're like me and a lot of other like YouTube, TikTok people, then you probably have multiple revenue streams. Some of those revenue streams are passive. Some of them are active from my labor. Maybe you are managing a lot of investments. You, maybe you are managing your assets and that's, you have different revenue streams from different assets that you have. And it's like, it's a lot. So it's, it, you, you take you take a look and you, you know, you, you just make sure that you're on top of everything and you just like, you know, let you know what's going on. Um, but this can also, of course, be like a writing project or anything where it could even be journaling where you are maybe reading your old journals and just seeing different things. You're reading your own, your old um, diaries and writings or even something current. You might be starting a new one or might, starting a new developmental journal or something like that. So but that's definitely like not warm and fuzzy. Like this is some serious, serious business. What's this Ace of Swords? Or someone else, you or not, you could be reading something that you that you wrote or that you submitted, a timesheet, something like that. What's this Ace of Swords? Thank you. This is a not a warm and fuzzy week. This is the Eight of Pentacles. Look at him. He's always like trying to like give her that rose and she's always, I love the mocha pot though. And she's just drinking her coffee, like trying to, I don't know what she's looking at, but she's just like looking at it. This is about work though. This is about work or, and or money. Eight of pentacles, indifference, magic in the cup of coffee, an affectionate, gentle, and tender approach helps to overcome your partner's indifference because it reflects simple and honest feelings. So... Honesty is the best policy here. Honesty and forthright. See, this is why like, I'm not great at like 
flirting. Like, I, I'm, I'm so cringe right now, but like, actually, I can still be cringe. We still have a little bit. This is like the fucking full moon in Aries. Like, can we just let it die already? I feel like it's been lasting fucking forever. <laughs> like, I'm ready for the solar eclipse just to get out of that cringy Chiron fucking full fucking moon. But like, this is, but seriously, like, I don't know what to text. Like, I have fucking... I, I'm a Mercury Pluto square person. Like, I'll just talk about like real things. I don't know. I, I, I think I'm a person that will be flirty or date like after like marriage or something, you know, like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. There's nothing happening. So I'm just saying like, you know, this is like this card, how it's like you overcome all these things by being you know, because it reflects simple and honest feelings, like, just don't try so hard. Like, Scorpio energy could just try, like, like, um, like, um, Sun Pluto people, you know, and I'm a Sun Pluto person, too. Like, I know I make fun of you guys a lot, but I'm a Sun Sexto Pluto, which is a lot different than, like, an opposition or a square or a conjunction. But, like, Sun Pluto people can just try so hard, you know, and it's just, like, it's too much for most people. But they make really good pop stars. They make really great famous people. Because that energy, first of all, Pluto is all about like the masses and TV and screens and all of that. So that's a more appropriate channel for that energy. Usually um, it, it can like overwhelm people like in personal, you know, kind of thing. Um, but this is just like, don't try too hard. Like just, you know, honest, simple and honest feelings. So if there is anything that you're trying to overcome or anything that you're trying to do, just be simple and honest and forthright. I would rather have, I would rather get feedback that they ask for more rather than feedback where they say you overwrote, there's too much going on. You know what I'm saying? So it's always like truncated editing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah yeah this is a win a win for someone that maybe has already been that way or if you've already been working on something um the eight of pentacles is like that apprenticeship where you've just been like getting really good at something then you, this might be a week where you just get it you know if you've been trying to learn a skill if you've been trying to learn a routine if you've been trying to learn or, or do or apply or something then you, you could like you know it clicks Let's take a look at the emperor please Ooh. oh three cards okay ace of wands the moon and the <laughs> sorry i just like <sighs> this card is just so funny he looks so upset he looks so upset and then the moon where they're like oh okay let's take a look seven of swords Sharing their charge. Tasting the magic of the seven red tulips. Only the beginning is not enough, but it is the beginning. Not every seed can ripen in a day. This is why you must persevere. I like that this is coming out for the emperor because the emperor, I feel like they already know the shortcuts. They already know the, they already know how to be clever. They already know strategy. You know, like they've already done it all. They've already seen it all. So the Seven of Swords, it's not always deceptive. Sometimes an hour and 40 minutes, holy shit. Sometimes it's just knowing how to take the shortcut or knowing how to do something faster or, or being able to kind of cut the line or um, no street smarts. Thank you. It's like street smarts. Ace of Wands, Union. The magic of the statues in the fire. Abandon is the surrender of oneself. One loses his own likeness to enter into something much greater. Yeah, this is the one with the fire. So in the fire, there's like the two people. This is interesting. The losing of oneself. Surrender. Losing your... One loses his own likeness to enter into something much greater. This is a very, you have two aces and they're very passionate. So there is some launch of something, some initiative or a feeling or, you know, something that 
that feels very right or very pure or something like how it says greater than oneself, something bigger than you. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at the moon. Oh, no. This is going to take forever to process. So you guys, if it takes forever to process, it's going to take forever to process. The moon, fancy, the spell of love. Slow but effective magic action based on the sound and evocation of happy images. It defeats deception and illusions, restoring serenity at home and increasing fecundity. Okay. In this context, the moon is almost like a little either intuitive or outright psychic vision for this person, for the emperor. This could be creative. It could be spiritual. It could just be like a good feeling where... What I like about this emperor is that, like I said, they have the benefit of a lot of experience. They've seen it all. They've done it all. They can recognize opportunity. They can recognize something valuable. They can recognize value either in, in personnel or in product or an opportunity, whatever it happens to be. So that that's what the moon is for me. It's like this person is starting something up or approving something or... They might have, I, I like the Seven of Swords. It's like there's some kind of shortcut though. You know, like this is like a clever, smart, you know, judicious maneuver that this emperor is like, listen, fate brings you the opportunity. Whether you take the opportunity or let it pass is you creating your own destiny. So, you know, the, the with the moon, it's got that like Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces kind of energy to it where it's like this person may be going on like a good feeling or you know, an intuitive hit or it's creative. So it depends. It's one or the other. But, you know, they're feeling the spark, that ace of wands. It's like, this is going to be, this is going to be bigger than, it's like a seed right now. It's like the, it's like the inception. It's the idea. It's the kernel, but it's going to be able to grow into something that's like, you know, for real, for real. What's the six of pentacles? Ooh. Okay. We have the 10 of chalices the Ten of Pentacles, and the Two of Pentacles. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. I love that dress. Okay, so this is that portal, that, that flow, okay, going back and forth. Embarrassment. This is the Two of Pentacles, the magic of the verbena embarrassment uncertainty unease and the fear of getting involved must be overcome that's so funny so the two of these are all like very sharing energy so this really does look like some kind of um i don't know partnership collaboration but it's like a lot of strong individuals like you have the king of swords and you have a magician and you have the emperor so this is like what are those movies where the superheroes all come together like um like batman and superman working together it's kind of like that ten of chalices attachment the magic of the chalice the attachment between partners orients the relationship towards continuity and it is necessary to form a happy family you know what i like about this i feel like this is such a nice give and flow like the, the partnerships alliances that happen on these eclipses, they're probably going to be karmic in the sense that you recognize each other from a past life and they're probably going to be very honest, like very much grounded in authenticity because of all the Scorpio energy, especially after Mercury leaves Libra and goes into Scorpio. It's like the superficial nicey nice this isn't cutting it. It's not like... like some summer party you know, like it, it, this isn't like summer vacation and let's just all go not care about life for a couple of weeks or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is real shit. This is real. Like, are, you know, like, is this really, really real, real, really, really, really for real? So this is cool. This is good. TLDR, this is good. This is serious stuff. Because all that shit fades, you know, does anyone remember those? Like, I don't do that stuff. Not like I'm judging anyone that does, but like, I don't know, like summer stuff, it's like, but I'm not like a beachy, we already talked about, I'm not like a beach person, like anyway, but you know, all of that kind of fun, you know, 
summer, um, summer vacation, all of that stuff, like think about it. Like it's a lot of money. It's a lot of energy getting wasted. It takes a lot of energy. It's a, it's a depletion energy. It's t literally taking in like little bits of poison to be poisoned a little bit, you know? Um, and then like, what do you have to show for it at the end? And this was one of my pitches when I worked at the camera shop and I was um, selling um, photo restorations because people look at the price tag and I'm the photo restorer. Like I'm the Photoshop maven that would restore their photos of their ancestors. And I would literally put back missing like parts of their faces. And it was like a lot of hard work. And so, you know, it's expensive, but that's what I would tell them. I said, okay, you go out, how much you, you go out for, um, a nice dinner with your spouse. You spend a few hundred dollars. Okay. Dinner, maybe drinks or whatever. What do you have to show for it the next day? You spend a couple hundred dollars on this photo restoration and you have your fucking ancestors fully, fully there. And you're going to have this photograph like the rest of your life. And you're going to pass it down to children and children's children and children's 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 children. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what this is. Did I, I don't know if I read this already. 10. I don't think I did. Okay, I did not. I did. Okay. Ten of Pentacles, the magic of the mirror. Vanity is a soul of love. You must love yourself to let yourself be loved, and you must love yourself before you can love another. This is nice. This is really nice. This is really cool. This is a really great partnership. There's something. So this is, I'm not getting like romantic or anything for some of you, maybe, but I'm just getting like some kind of really great um, um, partnership on uh, um a very equal level. This is a 10 of cups and pentacles. So this is like the max benefit that you're going to get, you know, like this is, this is a very good long-term indication um, of an equal give and flow back and forth. And especially with the emperor kind of overseeing all of this, they're not going to make a mistake. They have a good judgment. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, real quick. What is your defined feather? Hmm. <clears throat> Bottom of the deck, you have the grouse. Embrace the power of dance and movement to access your highest guidance. You also have cardinal and the condor. The cardinal, stand tall and proud. See the leadership role unfolding ahead of you. Don't be afraid to be a leader this week, too. Don't be afraid to, like, do the right thing. The right thing, the highest vibration, that will always be supported. Even if it doesn't look like it, <sighs> dignity, integrity, truth, and love, okay? Truth, love, and integrity, let that be your legacy. It doesn't matter if the entire world is corrupt all around you. Your soul matters. What feels right for you. Okay. So don't be afraid to be a leader this week. Condor, hold the highest vision for your life. You now possess the ability to move past any hurdles. The highest vision. That's very Jupiter and Pisces energy. I'm telling you, you not only do you have that helping you, but you can also move past hurdles with that energy too because of the strength of that um, that belief that you can reach for something like I said that you that maybe you could not reach for previously. Okay, guys, love you immensely. Take very good care. I will check in on you guys next time, my loves. Until then, many beautiful blessings upon all of your beautiful heads, darlings. Mwah.